Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Tank Farming's Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now, before we get started with the actual subject of the video, uh, I've got an idea. It just came up a few well, weeks slash months ago about a cool uh, project that I can make, well, a couple, read 10, maybe 20 videos about. And that is to uh, create a, well, hopefully working uh, Linux embedded system from scratch. So create a PCB with the all the required components, NAND, RAM, flash, SD card, uh, microcontroller, and create a custom um, build environment uh, with a custom compiler uh, that supports that specific uh, board that I create. And during the process, I'll walk you through every decision that uh, I'll be making. So regarding the uh, RAM, regarding the NAND or the SD card, or maybe the screen controller. Uh, so the, the purpose of that series is to create a Linux system, uh, basically a little bit of what the Raspberry Pi is like, uh, but why am I not using the Raspberry Pi to uh, create an actual built environment? Well, that's because the Raspberry Pi is already there and you can use it uh, as an example for your own, but you won't really learn anything uh, decision-wise. So why do we need certain components that are already there on the Raspberry Pi uh, that you take for granted, maybe? So please let me know down below if you find that idea interesting. And if you do, then maybe I'll uh, I'll create that, uh, that video series and I hope uh, that it will also build the channel because man I'm already at 350 subscribers it's really amazing that you guys watch my videos I really really appreciate it so yeah here's another video for you back to the topic now this is an old laptop I, uh, I got from a friend of mine say hello to the camera uh, and we'll be recycling uh, this laptop, um, especially the batteries. Now, this is an old HP laptop featuring an Intel Core i3, Windows 7, so yeah. You know, it's by modern day standards, it, it still boots, I think. I haven't even tried it, but by modern day standards, it's, it's yeah, you know, it's gone. Now, the battery. If you've got a laptop that features a battery like this, chances are um, that these contain 18650s and 10.8 volts, uh, 4200 milliamp hours. I think that this, 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 maybe this is an 18650, so there are two in a row. As you can see, they, they fit the, the form factor of the battery, fits the 18650 form factor well, almost perfectly. And they're about this length. So no, there will be three, uh, three of two pairs. So six batteries in total. And you could also calculate that, divide 10.8 by 3.7, I think you need to do. Well, that's roughly three. So, and there are two in parallel, because otherwise you won't get that capacity. Uh, so please be aware that this will uh, permanently damage your battery. It won't damage your battery if you uh, do everything right, but it won't be usable for this laptop. And this is also quite an interesting video if your laptop doesn't charge anymore, because most of the times there's just a single battery or a single pair of two batteries that has failed. So the battery management controller says, yo, this battery, it's dead, replace it. Uh, but it's mostly just a single pair that has uh, gone out of range compared to the other um, two battery pairs. So yeah, let's uh, move this laptop. As you can see, there aren't any screws. Uh, so yeah, how are we going to open it? Well, if you've got an, an energy problem, if you've got too much energy, then this is the best thing for you because we're just basically going to use brute force to open it. 
because it's you know it's glued together and well you can use a screwdriver but i really don't advise you to use a screwdriver because if you poke one of the batteries then the battery is damaged and there may be a short circuit then your battery just well explodes please be aware this isn't without any risk this is the minimal risk approach that i'll be taking but this isn't without any risk and if your battery has died and you're trying to repair the battery and you've got a glued battery like this one chances are you won't get the battery back together at the end of the video you could try it but at your own risk keep in mind that the battery is already gone and that you need to buy a second battery and then you can try to replace this one or to repair this one so how are we going to open this battery without damaging it well i've had a few uh, a few laptops that i've recycled batteries from and there is one trick that works out every time well almost every time it's a trick a little strange trick that you certainly don't want to do with a battery that still needs to go into a laptop so again if you want this to go back in your laptop don't do this uh, or if you want to do it fine but do it at your own risk because the battery will get damaged so how are we going to do it as well i hope you've got strong hands as i said we're just going to use brute force now you want to take it to to hold it like this and then just twist it basically and hope for the best basically need to break the glue and on some batteries this is a lot easier said than done as you're able to see maybe uh, take uh, gloves Ta-da! now these really uh, look really fancy uh, but these things are rather sharp so oh yeah i can definitely put more force on this <sighs> look it's starting to separate over here look that's what i meant there you go see just bent them and then the battery will separate and eventually the thing will just clip out Well, that's the idea, at least. But sometimes it's still a little bit difficult to do so. You can use a plying tool or prying tool, but don't use something made of metal, of course. Otherwise, you will be short-circuiting the things that are inside there's your battery pack now this was quite a successful method it required some force but as you can see the case did well survive really well actually the only part that damaged is this uh, thing but i think that if you bend it back a little and also this over here if you bend it back a little that it might as well just still work now the batteries are not hot this battery looks absolutely horrible. This of course is the battery management controller now. To get the batteries out of here, the batteries are glued to the, uh, to the case. So you need to wiggle the batteries a little bit. It helps if you remove the battery management controller. I just noticed how thin the wires are, the, the batteries. Oh, these are the wires for the thermocouples. Yeah, the temperature of the battery is monitored by the battery management controller so it doesn't overheat just pry it out a little and then you can lift it out as a whole these are the battery connectors well wow. that they use uh, well basically flat flex cables for that they mostly use just 
real wiring, but uh, these don't. Maybe that's due to the power draw that this laptop is capable of. I don't expect it to be uh, that high performance. As you can see the battery management controller is fully gunked up. You won't be able to, to get in any information out of it. What you now need to do is you need to take these apart. Oh wow, look at the size of these. Whoop. And the size of these thermocouples it's they are just it's a sensitive element put onto a flat flex cable and that connects to the battery management controller wow really really small and this black thing on the um, tape is just the prints that are on the batteries now separating them is going to be a little... Oh, the battery has started leaking or something. As I said separating them is uh, going to be a challenge, but first we want to actually measure the, uh, the voltages of the battery. But I think they're all dead. Oh no, 3.5. And yeah, this one is dead. 2.2 see this one is dead and that's why the battery management controller most likely says ah, well, your battery is dead replace it but if we revive this or if we're able to revive this then the battery pack will still work well this bank is good and this bank is a little bit on the low side you can revive those with a lab bench power supply of course all right so my soldering iron has heated up and let's desolder this thing that's one. Ah, shit. Oh, that hurt. Solder splashed everywhere. Again, solder splashed everywhere. But I'm okay, I think. So, that are all your uh, solder joints. So, now we can remove this plastic protective thing that will make sure that the battery stays separated and aligned might require a bit of force but you're not going to reuse this battery in this form anyway so why not just break it so now, here's your battery pack. Now you know that this is connected like this. And yeah, you can basically just cut it. That's one. That's uh, the other one. Well, there you go. Well, now I'm going to attempt to charge these batteries. So let's get my lip bench out and uh, Let's get them charged. This one is a little bit to the low side now. I uh, hope that you're able to separate the plus and the minus of these batteries. If you're not, this is the minus and this is the positive side of the, the 18650. Uh, so let's put this one out of the way because that was pretty good. Now this battery is, well, pretty dead. And this requires uh, careful charging so lower your current limit uh, well not all the way but quite a little bit set it at 4.2 volts also set it at 4.2 volts and what we actually want to do is we want to charge them until they're above 2.7 volts and when they are the battery charger that I have is able to charge them further. You can't just put a dead battery in the battery charger. Yeah, they're roughly around 4.2 volts. It's unloaded, so the, the voltage fluctuates a lot. Uh, let's start by with this one. It's drawing 3 amps. It's uh, pretty okay. 3 amps at 3.5 volts, so we can lower the amperage a little bit. I would do around 2. And now this one. This one draws 1 amps at 3.5 
4 volts. Oh, this one is drawing 300 milliamps at 4.2 volts. So I think that this one is pretty dead. But let's see uh, what this uh, this battery does. Let's see what it does if we turn off the lap bench. So 4.2, 3, 2. Yeah, it's self discharging a little, but that's well, okay. That's not really ideal, but. Let's continue charging. Now in the meantime, I grabbed my battery charger and tester. Uh, we're going to insert it into the wall plug. And well, this are, these are two batteries. And you can just, please notice the plus and the minus. I was about to put it in like in the wrong manner. And you can just put the two batteries connected in parallel into the battery charger. That's no problem uh, because the two are connected in parallel. So the battery charger thinks that it's a single battery. Now what I'd like to do with these batteries, I'd like to do a normal test at 300 milliamps, then it will fully charge the batteries. It will discharge them and it will charge them again and it will tell you the capacity of the battery. So that's really useful to have to see if these batteries are basically worth anything. So let's uh, set that aside. This battery is still not drawing current. Well, it's drawing around 300 milliamps at uh, 4.2 volts. This one is drawing, well, 1.8 amps at 3.7 volts. So that's pretty decent. Now let's check this one. 3.3, put it out. 3.2. Yeah, that one's able to go into the uh, battery tester as well. Now I think I'm going to do, connect this one all the way to the left over here. A uh, battery tester will come on saying, hey, I found a new battery, normal test, 300 milliamp of current. Because you basically want to take it slow. Now we can turn off this channel, remove these wires. Yeah, the uh, BMS isn't of use for anything. So I suggest that you could just throw that away. Maybe you could hack the system, reverse engineer everything to see yeah, what chips they use, if you can program it or something. I mean, you can get some cool parameters out of these things. I think that the um, battery charge controllers MOSFETs are also temperature controlled and temperature regulated. Which is of course quite handy, because you really don't want this thing to overheat. And there are lots of test points. Now, if the battery charge controller flexes, yeah, that's no problem. PCBs can handle quite a lot of flex, so but it's always funny that they that all batteries basically just use the same connector and that's this connector. So let's uh, see what this battery's voltage is up to. Connected 3.9, yeah, that's just the output voltage of my lab bench. Uh, drops rapidly, so. Let's uh, wait a while for this thing to level off and see uh, if we can resurrect it. As you can see the voltage of this one is going to the high side rather fast. And the resistance is also very high. 125 milliohm. So that's the self discharge resistance. So this one's uh, the 33 is around the, the figures you usually want to have. So let's wait uh, for this to complete. Now I think that this one will complete the first. So we're back. The charging has finished. And as you're able to see, the first battery is actually pretty close to the original spec, which was, let me get the 
4200 milliamp hours. And the first one is, well, 4126 milliamp hours. This is just a joke. This one is a little bit less. I bumped the current up to 700 milliamps because it was taking forever. Well, this one is uh, most certainly the best of them all. Maybe I'll do another round with a little bit less current to really check uh, the capacity of these things. I mean, the higher the current, the faster it will charge, but also the faster it will discharge. So, yeah. Well, this is going to uh, be thrown away because this is uh, not for use for me. There is another battery which I in the beginning of making this video didn't want to uh, yeah, sacrifice actually but whilst taking apart that laptop I realized that that laptop wasn't of any uh, worth so yeah let's also take this apart now this one is a little bit easier to open because it's uh, it's a single row of 18650s, not a double row. So that means, of course, less capacity. Well, let's check the capacity first. 41 watt hours. Yeah, 41 watt hours of capacity. Let's pop it. This is a, it's a lot easier to twist and thus to open because the case is well basically separated there you go that's better voila there's your battery for 18650s undamaged, ready to uh, to be taken out. So let's actually take them out. Again, same connector, same battery connector. And I'm hoping that slightly bending this will allow them to fall out, but I'm afraid not. So I'll have to pry the battery up a little. Let's do it at the negative end. Oop. This is the positive end. Now this is the negative end. You know you can really build up a quite large of a stack of batteries when you recycle old laptops. It's really cool. We don't need this circuit board anyway. I can pull the battery out with it but it looks like I'm not able to ah there you go oh there's one ah, poof. so yeah there's your battery it's all sticky ah oh, they put a massive uh, sticky strip over it so let's remove these white stickers and also remove the metal strips because they aren't really of... Oh, well, I'm going to detach them, I'm not going to remove them because you can solder things to them. So let me grab my, uh, my uh, cutting tool. Again, the thermocouple. Let's cut this to individual cells. Now, with all those batteries, you can really make a uh, DIY power wall to uh, store solar energy and to be able to well, live off the grid. Now, I don't think I'll be doing that since I still live with my parents, so it's not up to me. 
Let's get my uh, my multimeter to uh, actually measure the uh, different voltages that these uh, batteries have. And to give them a bump charge if needed, and else to uh, put them into the charger. 1.1 1.1 1.2 1.2, so they are equally discharged a lot. So let's uh, bump them up to my uh, lab bench and then uh, put them in the battery charger. So let's limit the current to around 2 amps, which should be fine. And let's wait for them to charge. Now I'm going to remove these from the uh, battery charger. Since these are well, charged. And they're okay. Now I think that these are charged enough, so let's put them in the uh, battery charger. 500 milliamps. Now I want to test it. Alright, let's charge the other one. Alright, now in the meantime, I looked something up on the, uh, I think it was on Thing first, and I found uh, these things. Now these allow you to put in 18650s and store them like so. Now this is still a pack and I don't really want to take these apart since sometimes I do prefer to actually have a pair in parallel. So for that I'm going to cut the inside these little holders so that the batteries in that are still in parallel will also fit. You might need them to give a little push. Ooh. Yeah the battery shorted out a little so that's not uh, not good, so you need to remove these uh, kind of clips. Only side clips are are allowed, otherwise the thing will uh, short out on itself. I think the battery is still okay. Yeah, 1.9 volts, yeah. You can short these out for a tiny amount of time, but not too long. It won't... Uh, go up in flames immediately but you don't certainly don't want them to short very much longer than uh, a few seconds so keep an eye out on that don't short them for too long other pair remove this thing and also oh, you can maybe just only bend it back yeah that's also if you bend it back if you fold it over like that it will also uh, work out fine I suppose and then just insert them into your holder and take the top cover insert it like this and then you've got a nice safe battery holder now of course this is perfect for putting them in a drawer absolutely wonderful so let's put this one in the charger Now of course you need to make sure that these metals don't touch each other because otherwise it will uh, ruin the test of the other batteries. But the resist, oh this one is a, a bad, but the others are actually pretty close to each other with the uh, resistance. So again this is really nice to have and yeah you know you can really upgrade your battery storage using these things yeah, if the, the grounds touch each other or if the positive sides touch each other that doesn't really matter as long as the as long as it's one terminal of the battery that touches the other terminal of the battery that's fine so like so now you've got a uh, nice well they're not stackable 
or something but well actually you could zigzag them like so or even like so kind of like lego you could stack them on top of each other and then do this and so yeah then uh, once you recycle a couple of laptops then you've got a uh, battery drawer that uh, well basically looks like this and it's, this is not all I mean we've got this one I've got uh, I'm using a couple of uh, 18650s so yeah it's, uh, this is just perfect now they are not uh, all the same capacity so that's a little bit of a shame pretty awesome free recycled 18650s with well, excellent storage because this is really uh, I think that this is just really the way to go to store those uh, those batteries because if you have them laying around you know they they will definitely short out uh, once you gather a lot of batteries and yeah that's not good you absolutely don't want them to short out because if they short out for long enough they will catch fire and then yeah you know the rest everything will catch fire and your house will probably be gone because these things do explode with a lot of energy of course because it's uh, 220 milliamp hours that's uh, stored inside uh, well most of them i think that's the average capacity yeah i hope that you uh, you enjoyed this little uh, battery uh, recycling video i find these things very interesting and maybe i'll yeah, do some projects with them at this point i'm not really sure what i want to do with them uh, at the one point i want to use them for things but at the other point i want to save them for maybe something big that i'm not sure what it is right now uh, but if you've got any ideas please feel free to let me know down below yeah well if you're going to recycle them uh, yourself well have fun with it because it's most certainly a fun process to rip apart such a uh, laptop battery and uh, yeah well thanks for watching this video uh, i hope to see you soon on my channel uh, please don't forget to leave the uh, comment down below if i should make such a, um, a linux development board embedded system video series so let me know and i'll see you guys in the next one bye hey guys this is tim i hope you liked that video if you want to see more please make sure to subscribe uh, you can also share the video with your friends and hit that like button. I'll see you in the next one.